Welcome back to the Truth Be Told Project Podcast. I'm your host, Jay, and today we're diving into a topic that's both timeless and timely for many young Christians today, and that is navigating the complexities of traditional marriage roles in our modern world. Now, if you're dating, engaged, or newly married, this episode is for you. The concept of traditional marriage often conjures up images of the husband as the sole breadwinner he's the leader and he just runs the household he is the man he does his manly thing while the wife on the other hand she has her nice dress on and she has her apron on all the time and she is the homemaker she's the nurturer she keeps the house clean she keeps the food cooked and she just keeps everything in the house together now these roles are deeply rooted in biblical teachings or are they and these teachings have guided countless christian couples for centuries however in today's rap changing society where women are excelling in careers and men are becoming more actively involved with the parenting and other household duties societal expectations are shifting so how do these traditional roles fit in in the christian community discussions about the roles of men and women they often turn to two main perspectives in these perspectives this this stuff goes without being said and those perspectives are egalitarianism and complementarianism them are the two perspectives that you would hear christians give not saying that they are alike that all christians are alike but you're either going to hear about the the, you're either going to get the egalitarian point of view or you're going to get the complementarian point of view now egalitarians these are the people that advocate for equal and inner changeable roles within marriage they emphasize mutual submission and shared leadership typically this is the view that says women could do anything that a man could do now i haven't heard you know the egalitarian say that a man could do what a woman could do like the woman will go to work and the man will stay home and cook and do all that kind of stuff within some egalitarians you won't hear that i haven't ran into anyone who had that perspective but most the primary idea behind egalitarianism is that women could do the same thing that a man could do complementarianism on the other hand suggests that while men and women are equally valuable they're both made in the image of god they have distinct roles but they complement each other particularly in marriage and oftentimes in church leadership scripture gives us some insights into these roles particularly in ephesians chapter 5 it calls for husbands to love their wives as christ loved the church and it calls for wives to submit to their husbands as unto the lord but it's crucial to understand these directives in the context of mutual love and respect this doesn't mean that you know the the husband is to dominate his wife or control everything that his wife does and it doesn't mean that a woman is supposed to submit to everything that her husband says or does both partners are called to submit to each other out of reverence for christ now i'm not advocating for the egalitarian view but i'm going to go ahead and explain further what i mean by that submitting to each other out of reverence for christ what i mean is that this idea is to highlight partnership you guys are to be partners, okay? Now, as we explore the roles of men and women in Christian relationships today, it's illuminating. It's always important to go back and look at household culture and what it was like in New Testament times. The family structure during the New Testament time in which Ephesians was written, or the entire New Testament, it was heavily influenced by the broader Greco-Roman society and, to an extent, Jewish traditions Uh, when we read the bible we often read our own ideas into the scriptures um, and, and to avoid doing that it's always good to consider the context in which scripture was written we always want to consider the context in which scripture was written because you don't want to make the bible say or teach something that it does not teach or something that would be foreign to the original audience but anyway i don't want to go blabbing on about historical 
context. Let's consider the historical context of New Testament household roles. In the Greco-Roman world, the family was structured around what is called pater familias. That means that the male was the head of the household. The man held significant legal and moral authority over all family members, including his wife, including the children, and many of the household servants or slaves. His role required that he ensure the family's economic welfare. He wanted to uphold social responsibilities, and he wanted to take the lead in religious practices. Christian teachings, when, you know, this Christ movement, when this new Christ-following movement began, they began to challenge and transform some of the norms of the day. The New Testament did recognize the authority of the husband and the father, but it introduced a radically new model of leadership. This this new model of leadership was marked by love, it was marked by sacrifice, and it was marked by servanthood. Now, when we refer back to Ephesians chapter 5, it tells husbands to love their wives like Christ loved the church. This means that Christ's love was sacrificial and it was unconditional. Now, I know a lot of times, particularly I'm speaking to myself, when I used to read this verse, I used to say, yes, I will jump in front of a bullet for my wife. But it goes a bit further than that. A lot of us are willing to jump in front of a bullet, but a lot of us are not willing to turn the game off, turn the TV off, and listen to our wives as they talk about their day. We're not willing to sacrifice more time and more energy, but we're willing to jump in front of a bullet to protect our wives. So we want to think and we want to love on the same level that Christ loved the church, which is sacrificially and unconditionally. Now, this this concept of sacrificial love and unconditional love, this was a radical and revolutionary idea in a society where authority and hierarchy often dominated the marital relationship. The New Testament and the Christian faith radically changed the concept of marital relationship roles. Women were typically tasked with managing the household and raising children. They found a new kind of dignity in the Christian faith. The New Testament instructed wives to respect and submit to their husbands. This mirrored cultural norms, but it framed this within the context where submission was was mutual and based on reverence for Christ. Also, the New Testament, or in New Testament times, children were under the complete authority of their fathers in both Greco-Roman and Jewish contexts, where these contexts were also addressed uniquely in Christian texts. The New Testament underscores obedience, but it emphasizes that it should be in the Lord, reflecting a boundary set by Christian ethics. And the responsibilities of the fathers were, it was not only to love your wives, but you had a responsibility to your child too, or to your kids. Fathers are advised in the New Testament to not provoke their children to anger, but you're to nurture them in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. This was stated in Ephesians chapter six. Now, the historical backdrop helps us understand how radical and revolutionary Christian teachings were at at this time. They were not merely about maintaining social order, but it was about transforming relationships to reflect Christ's teachings on love, on equality, and mutual respect. Now, reflecting on this, it's clear that while some aspects of these roles have evolved, the core principles of love, respect, and mutual support remain central to Christian teachings on household roles today. So as we navigate these roles in our own lives, let's strive to embody those principles of love, of equality, of mutual of mutual support and submission, and just partnership and service. Let's embody that today. This is a great reflection of what it means, of what it means to be a part of the body of Christ. Many of us grew up hearing about the traditional roles. The, the man is supposed to bring home the bacon. The man is supposed to go get it and the woman's supposed to take care of home. She's supposed to have daddy's food ready when he gets in the 
door, you know. But now we're finding ourselves in dual income households. Both the husband and the wife, both partners often work outside the home and take shared responsibility for household duties like cleaning, cooking. We live in a society where this is really understandable because the high cost of living and inflation. People are struggling when both people work and they're bringing over 150k home a year. So it'll be tough for a man to get out there and he would have to make over six figures to live a fairly decent life, depending on what you consider to be decent. This shift reflects a broader societal change, but also a deeper understanding of serving and partnership. So how do we as Christians navigate these challenges while while staying true to what the Bible teaches and faithful Christian ethics regarding our role in the household as husband and wife? So I know a lot of you are thinking, we know that times are changing and the culture is changing, but the Bible doesn't change. What does the Bible obligate me to do as a husband and as a wife? What am I commanded to do? So let's get into that aspect. In this segment, we're going to talk about what the Bible commands us to do as husband and wife. So question number one, am I as a husband obligated to make more money than my wife? Because this is a question a lot of men have. A lot of men will resent their wife if they make more money than them because they feel like it takes away from their manhood and i know some are asking am i as a woman obligated to be a stay-at-home mom am i obligated to not pursue a career am i obligated to keep the house clean and take care of the kids and to all of those questions the answer is an emphatic no Here's what the Bible commands you as a husband and as a wife. I'm going to start with the husband first. Well, no, I'm going to start with both of you first. Husband and wife, you are commanded to complement each other. In Genesis 2.18, the Bible says, Then the Lord God said, It is not good for a man to be alone. I will make him a helper corresponding to him. In other words, what this scripture says and what it suggests, is that the woman will complete or make up where the man lacks and vice versa. You are to complete each other. Two are better than one. Partnership is better than singleness for accomplishing any task. And I don't have the scripture pulled up, but that is a verse in Ecclesiastes. Two are better than one. A three-chord strand is not easily broken. Google it. It's in there. I assure you, in the book of Ecclesiastes. You are to complete one another. You are to compliment one another. And, you know, I'm glad God made it that way because I'm not the smartest man in the world. I know a little of a lot of things, but I don't know everything. And my wife has pick up this picked up the slack for areas that I lack in my wife is good with numbers she's good she's uh the phrase that I want to use is uh, she has solid business acumen she has a degree in business so that is a plus for me because I know a lot about philosophy I know a lot about um biblical studies I know a lot about theology I know a lot about Christian apologetics but I am deficient When it comes to discussing anything about business, anything about finances and stock markets and stock exchanges and all that kind of stuff, I could read information on it, but a lot of the concepts are a bit over my head. There are some, I have skills in building things and making things and fixing things and repairing things and skills that my wife doesn't have. And I make up for where she lacks. And so we complement each other. And that's how you are to work together. You are to complement each other. Where you lack as a husband or as a wife, your spouse is supposed to pick up. Now, the Bible contains several passages that provide guidance and commands for husbands and wives that emphasize the importance of love. It emphasizes the importance of respect, the importance of mutual submission and partnership. Now, here are some key biblical commands. Command number one, this is for 
for you husbands out there. This is a command for me because I'm a husband. Ephesians 5, 25 through verse 28 tells us, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church, and he gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any blemish, but holy and blameless. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. Husbands are commanded to love their wives sacrificially. I talked about this earlier. I'm talking about it again. You're to love your wife sacrificially as Christ loved the church. Now, this love involves selflessness. It involves care and it involves dedication. It involves commitment. It involves commitment physically and emotionally that other those other parts of the verse can be broken down but we'll be here for a long while if i open those up but i'm starting a men's channel or a men's podcast for men where we discuss biblical principles for manhood so stay tuned for that fellas love your wives as christ loved the church here's a second command for husbands first peter 3 says 3, 7. It says, husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. Let me bust that open for a little bit. Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect. So you're commanded to love sacrificially. You're commanded to be selfless. You're commanded to care and you're commanded to be dedicated and you're commanded to treat your wife with respect respect as the weaker partner as hairs she's equal to you she's equal to you with your gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers and the scripture says that if you mistreat your wife your prayers will be hindered so if you've been praying for something or praying about something and your prayers ain't went beyond the ceiling in your house or whatever room you pray in how are you treating your wife that's the question that that you need to be asking yourself. Husbands are also commanded to be considerate. You're commanded to be respectful. You to recognize that they're equal, that they have equal value as co heirs of God's grace. Husband, you are also commanded to lead with integrity. Colossians 3.19 says, Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Husbands are to lead with gentleness and integrity, avoiding harshness or bitterness. Fellas, fellas, you are commanded to be gentle. You're commanded to be with integrity. You are to avoid harshness and bitterness. I know it's hard, especially when we're doing something that we deem as important at the moment. They always want to talk when the game is on. They always want to talk when, you know, something's going on or we're doing something important and it, it could cause us to be bitter. But scripture commands us to avoid harshness and bitterness as well. Lead with gentleness and integrity. Another one, fellas, you are commanded to provide and protect. First Timothy 5, 8 says anyone who does not provide for their relatives and especially for their own household has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. I don't really have to elaborate on that. So you as a husband, you have a responsibility to provide and protect your family or you don't want to be worse than an unbeliever. All right, ladies, are you ready? Here are your commands. The commands for the wife is to submit to your husband. And an issue I find among a lot of Christians is that women are willing to submit to their boss. They're submit they're willing to submit to their pastors. They're willing to submit to their fathers before they submit to their husbands. And Ephesians 5:22 through 24 says, "Wives, submit yourselves to your own." He placed emphasis on that. To your own husband as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands. In, in some things? No, it says in everything. Wives are called to submit 
to their husbands, mirroring the church's submission to Christ. This submission is rooted in a mutual respect and partnership. Submit to your own husband, not to somebody else's husband. And I'm going to just leave it at that. I don't have to elaborate on it anymore. Submit. That doesn't mean uh, be a foot a footstool or to be a rug to where your husband steps on you, but it means to willingly submit as you would to Christ. That's what scripture commands you to do. Now, Ephesians 5.33 also commands women to respect their husbands. I know in the society we live in where women could get to twisting that neck, just popping off at the mouth in front of people, you, you embarrassing your husband in front of people. Scripture commands you to respect your husband. Ephesians 5.33, it says, however, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself and the wife must respect her husband. Put some respect on his name. Put some respect on your husband's name, especially in front of people, especially in front of your kids, because the kids will begin to mirror what you do. They're watching you. They're watching your activities between you and your husband. So watch yourself. Respect your husband. Respect game. It says that the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is is the head of the church. This has nothing to do with anything, any hierarchy or anything, but the role of the man is the head of the house and the wife is not the head. It's a problem in the house when you got two heads struggling for, you know, the, the role or the position that God gave. Respect your husband. Also, from the creation narrative in Genesis 2.18, I want to go back to that. Wives are seen as helpers and partners complimenting their husbands in fulfilling God's purpose. So you are commanded to compliment each other. Husbands and wives, that's for both. Of, those are mutual commands. Compliment one another. Here's another one for wives. First Peter 3, 1 through 2. Wives, in the same way, submit yourselves to your own husbands so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives when they see the purity and reverence of your lives. Wives are called to live with purity and reverence. It's, it's testimony that you are saved. It's going to be hard to convince somebody that you saved when you don't respect your husband and you don't submit to your husband. You got to set a godly example within your marriage. Also, this is for the man and the woman. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Both husbands and wives are called to mutually submit to each other, demonstrating humility and service in the relationship. In Colossians 3, 18 through 19, you're committed it to love and respect each other. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as is fitting to the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Love and respect are essential components of a healthy marriage with each partner valuing and honoring the other. Another thing, both of you are mutually commanded to be faithful emotionally. I could do a whole podcast episode on this faithfulness thing because a lot of people think of faithfulness in regard to uh, sexual or physical faithfulness, but you find yourself with a work husband or a work wife and you're intimate or sharing intimate details about your life with somebody that is not your spouse, stop it. Stop it. Hebrews 13 and 4 says, marriage should be honored by all and the marriage bed kept pure for God would judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Faithfulness and purity are commanded for both of you. This emphasizes the sanctity and the exclusivity of the marital relationship. Another thing that you are commanded to do is you're commanded to pray for each other. Pray for each other. Also, you are commanded to not deprive each other of sex. You're commanded. Ladies, I love you. I mean, as a brother in Christ, I love you. But women have this thing where when they get mad at their husbands they have this thing uh, you're closing down shop you're not giving them anything as a punishment for whatever it is he's done and i want you to be mindful be very very mindful scripture commands it commands you in first corinthians 7 5 it says do not deprive each other except perhaps by mutual consent and for a time so that you may devote your 
yourselves to prayer. Then come together again so that Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Couples are encouraged to pray together and for each other and strengthening their spiritual bond. Now, talking again about 1 Corinthians 7, 5. Only time you could go without having sex or the only time you should deprive each other or fast from having sex is for spiritual reason and that it's mutually agreed upon. There's mutual consent and that it's only for a time, not for a long time, because you have physical needs and the scripture says, come together again so that Satan will not tempt you. And when physical needs are not met, Satan will tempt you. Believe me, somebody, some woman or some man will come and they'll have the right look, they'll have the right smell. Email. They'll have the right that words to say to seduce you into being in a place that you shouldn't be because you chose to deprive one another of physical and emotional needs. Be very careful. Satan will tempt you. These commands provide a biblical framework for marriage. It promotes love, respect, mutual support, and spiritual unity. By adhering to these principles, Christian couples can build a strong, godly marriage that reflect Christ's love and serve as a witness to the world so these are what you are required to do as a christian husband and wife those are the commands it doesn't matter whether you choose to work or make more money than your wife or if the wife chooses to stay home or not or pursue a career and develop her professional skills or not it's going to be different for every household but this is what you should do you should communicate and talk to each other about your dreams and your your desires and work out some Something together. In some families, it's, it's going to be different for every household. In some families, the husband may be the primary breadwinner, while in others, the wife may be, or the wife may earn a higher income. In some homes, the wife may take on more of the child, child care responsibilities, while in others, the husband may be the primary caregiver. The key is open communication and, and the willingness to adapt. But you make sure you keep those scriptural commands that we just went over. That's what you're obligated to do talk to each other about your expectations your dreams and your fears and seek god's guidance in prayer and be willing to compromise and then just as needed remember the goal is not to rigidly adhere to a set of rules but it's to build a loving respectful partnership that honors god and reflects his design for your marriage now as we close today's episode i encourage all of us to approach these roles not just as duties but as opportunities to demonstrate christ's love through our relationships let's continue to learn from scripture from each other and from the Holy Spirit's guidance in our lives. Thank you for joining me today on the Truth Be Told Project podcast. I hope this discussion has been enlightening and encouraging. Don't forget to subscribe for more insights and conversations. Until next time, keep walking in faith and growing in love. Peace. God bless.